and welcome everyone to the Streamzy community call on 23rd February. The first point on the agenda is uh, question and issues. If anyone has something they want to raise, uh, now might be one of the opportunities. Hearing nothing, can move to the PRs and issues. Uh, I added a bunch of PRs, which seem to be hanging there without much change for some time. Uh, first one is this super old uh, PR for the quota plugin, since uh, Rob and Sam are now completely rewriting it. I assume we can close it. Yeah, I would say yes. And the same should apply for the second quota plugin PR, which is also quite old. And again, it is being rewritten completely, so. Yep. Okay. Then there are some PRs in the operators repo. So this one is from you, Kyle. Yeah, sorry, I've been distracted. Uh, I'm going to be on this like today, tomorrow. Um, I just got distracted with some other things, but this is, I've got some things I'm working on locally, just I'm um, cleaning up the, uh, how the passwords are um, handled, basically just uh, the example there, instead of the example there has the password kind of hard coded into the resource, which isn't obviously what we want. So I'm just separating it out. So it's um, a secrets generated for the users that are specified. But that's that should be coming soon. Sorry for the delay on that. But it's definitely being worked on. So if you work on it today or tomorrow, it's probably fine to keep it open. Otherwise, I think you should consider closing it and then opening it again when, uh, when it's ready. OK, yeah. Next one is this one, Marosh. Well, this is, yeah, okay. This is about the non-regression profile. Uh, I think uh, in the recent PRs, I have uh, added a few of these classes to the regression profile. And I think there are maybe two classes which are not using the uh, regression profile. And I think there are, let me check. There are like namespace deletion recovery and topic scalability, et, et cetera. So I think uh, from the Azure perspective, something like uh, topic scalability isn't working. And also namespace deletion recovery, uh, I think is not working. So I don't know, like we, we could potentially close this PR because now I have added like specific isolated ST into regression profile and also the class operation isolated. So I know that you you said that the non-regression profile doesn't make sense because we should like uh, reason about uh, why these test cases or test suits are not in the regression profile, et cetera. Yeah, so to me, it, abs it absolutely doesn't make sense to have some non-regression, like you don't have non-acceptance profile for the things which are not yeah. in the acceptance. Either you don't have non-upgrade tests and so on. So, so like 
if there is some reason why these tests should not be part of the regression, then I think like with the other tests, they should have some test suit yeah. or profile where they fall into. But I don't think this kind of uh, non thing really makes sense to me. Yeah, to it should be like complement of regression because we have that scalability, etc. test cases which are not part of the regression. But I get your point. I think so, we... so it's fine to have scalability, which is not part of the regression, but then you have a scalability profile, right? Or yes. can have, for example. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that makes sense. Also, fine. also I can understand why the topic scalability test might not work, but the namespace recovery test. I don't think there's anything. Why should actual functionality not work? So can you also, if the test is not working, can you also look into why it's not working and make sure that this is just some test issue or whether that's some actual issue in the production code or what the problem is? Because I think that should be working and we should know if it doesn't work. Okay, so uh, I can take a look on that. So and should then... I close it? Yeah, yeah close Sorry, it. Then. I will make a note. Okay. Then the next one is this oh, one. Again. <laughs> I know we discussed it two weeks ago, but I don't think we moved really forward since two weeks ago. Yeah, so I have checked the results from the breach, uh, which I have added. Uh, there was a question how much it uh, takes. Like, I think it was like one hour, one and a half. And I know that there is a problem with the opening dummy PR against it, even when uh, Paolo just released breach and then he just creates the dummy PR and then he tests it instead of using our regression pipeline. Uh, but he still is like open the PR, dummy PR and uh, uh, trigger the regression, right? So maybe we should, uh, or maybe I should just change the PR as you point out with the uh, input image. And then it will just uh, triggers pipeline via, via image. But I have been busy, so I didn't, didn't have much time for it. So like there is two ways, one way is just uh, let it how it is like now, like add only bridge uh, pipeline or I'll change it to how you propose in this, like uh, have it uh, input as an image. So to be honest, I'm not using it that much. So I guess it's up to you and Paolo how you prefer to have it. But I think it would be good to move forward with it one way or another after one month. Well, I think I, we can like merge this uh, PR, I think, if anyone has any problems with it. Like well, it will... you, you probably cannot merge it because it's not edited as a pipeline and it's not run and tested as a pipeline. Oh, so so we, think, uh, you need to do that first manually, you or oh. Paolo. Okay. And then you can run it and then you can merge it if it works. Like if you merge it just now, then nothing happens. There's no pipeline. Yes. Yeah. The we should... If you just okay. merge it. Okay, I will I will do these manual steps. And I guess it also needs the review. So Paolo, if you are fine with this, then and if you want this, then I guess you should probably approve it. Yeah, to be honest, I remember that I reviewed that and approved, but yeah, uh, I was wrong. I, I was just commenting on the on the PR. So anyway, yeah, I am fine. So I will approve and uh, thanks Maros for testing. 
and uh, then we can merge. Okay, anyone has any other PR or issue they want to talk about? If not, anyone has any proposals they want to talk about? Okay, in that case, issue triage is next. And we have three different issues. So, Kyle, you reported this one. Yeah, I, you know, I spent all the time on this, but I just could not recreate it for the life of me. Um, I did find it kind of the issue described where a resource, the status of the rebalance resource wasn't updated is related to something else, which I've opened another issue for. It's the other issue in this triage list. Um, but what triggered this error to happen, I just haven't been able to reproduce. So I'm, I feel kind of, uh, I, I don't want to, well, it, it, if I can't reproduce it, I, I've got to close it, right? Um, I don't know if anyone has any other ideas to try to trigger this. Um, I don't have really much no. information. No, there's nothing like if you can't reproduce it, you should close it. So you can have a look at the code and figure out from the code if the watch is recreated or is not recreated. Yeah, right? I can... like my understanding from the issue was that you are saying the code is not there for these two watches. Yeah, well, I, I was looking at the code um, and yeah, just testing it. I was having some trouble testing it. Um, that's all. So yeah, I, I can look deeper. I can put more time on it and, and um, just basically trying to prove, like, I can look deeper in the code and find evidence if it's not, and try to find evidence of it not being recreated. But I was just trying to basically um, break it so I could prove it wasn't working. That's all just the evidence I was having trouble gathering. Um, but yeah, so I guess, yeah, right. If the error came up, then it's definitely a problem, right? Um, because even if it was like an environmental issue, even if it was an environment issue, um, it still should have been handled, right? Uh, logged properly, right? Yeah, so, so this, this two old resource, we know that that happens and we know that that's normal. That's how Kubernetes works. Right. So this error itself isn't anything special, and it might be hard to reproduce. But which, it can happen. Yeah, uh, uh, but that can happen. So that's completely fine. So if you cannot reproduce it, which I think is not necessarily unexpected, because yeah, I, I'm not sure how I would reproduce this. Uh, then I think you should look into the code. Yeah, I I found like some of the examples I've listed, like we had similar, we've had in the past, we had an issue like this in the topic operator, um, which we've patched. So um, yeah, kind of we, I can just, yeah, look deeper into that. And I was thinking we could replicate basically what we did for the other operators in the, in the topic operator for like the connect, for connecting the rebalance operator. Um, because those two yeah. pieces of code seem to be kind of written a little differently. Um, even if, like even if it was a refactor to have uh, the the rebalance operator and connect operator share that code, that might be the that might be even the better option um, if I if I really can't reproduce. But yeah. So so will you look into it? Because I mean, if the watch isn't recreated, then yeah, uh, I guess the connector operator can probably live with it somehow, but because it has the periodical reconciliation, I'm not sure the rebalance can, but it's fairly serious issue. Yeah, I, I, I don't like it. Yeah, I, I'll i keep on, I'll keep on digging into it. Yeah, I just, I'm a little, yeah, I'm sorry it's taken so long. I just, 
been having just, just some trouble, but yeah, I'll keep at it um, and see what I can turn up. Um, and yeah, it, even at the worst case, I mean, I guess I could open like something like if I can't re if I can't reproduce or, or solve it, maybe even a refactor the share of the code. And then we, because we know that the top work operator was fixed for this and other operators and they don't have the issue or haven't had the issue. So then we'll know that we probably won't run into this issue again. <clears throat> but yeah, you can assign it to me or whatever. I'm still I'm kind of neurotic about these things. It's bothering me, keeping me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The next issue we have is uh, is this one. The name is a bit confusing because I think the custom repository is working and what the user really wants is support for some kind of maven mirrors which i think can be useful because yes yeah, sometimes companies are using things like that and close access to any outside repositories so uh, it seems to me like that might be useful but we should clarify how to do it and it might be something else than just the repository functionality So I was going through this uh, issue uh, right now, but is that the problem of, uh, I don't know, authentication to a kind of private Maven repo or there are other problems, different problems? So what's the, the issue that it's not working out of the box? I don't know why it's not working out of the box and I don't have any environment where I can reproduce it because I don't have any, any Maven mirror anywhere. Okay. So we will need a way to reproduce it, right? Yeah, I guess at least for accepting any kind of PR. So, I mean, we can track it as an enhancement and yeah, we can add as a part of the work that there should be some way to reproduce it so that it can be tested and so on. Do we want to tag it as a help wanted as well? Yeah, I would probably do it. Yeah.
Does this make some sense? Yes. <clears throat> By the way, does this will need some proposal or is this complexity like easy to handle? <laughs> I don't know, I guess that depends on what the solution is. So better? Yes. Okay, and the last one is this one from you, Kyle. And to be honest, I didn't really follow why exactly should what you propose here happen. So when I was digging into the other issue, I came and ran into this uh, what I think is a potentially a UX a not nice UX so a user creates a rebalance resource right and say there's a say there's a something wrong with it right you get a error in the log in the cluster operator log and um, a user goes to update the Kafka rebalance uh, resource to kind of correct this. Maybe it's a typo or something, right? Um, now the rebalance resource will be updated, right? With the spec will be updated, but the status will never change, right? Um, you have to re basically the resource will have to be refreshed if you want to update it, um, if you want to make any sort of spec change. Um, but basically, when the user updates it, they don't know that the um, they to them, as far as they're concerned, if they're not looking at the logs, if they're just looking at the resource, um, nothing's changed. Maybe they, they fixed the resource correctly, but they won't know um, because it's not reflected in the status section uh, until they refresh the resource manually. So um, I thought it might be better UX if we kind of, if someone updates the spec, um, that the status section should always be updated appropriately and it, um, maybe maybe the you know maybe we don't have to do kind of refresh on the resource maybe you could even just put you know update i just want the status updated with kind of the the status of the resource that's essentially what the ask is here right so if there's an error put the error there because right now um the status isn't being reported in the Kafka rebalance resource. And I think it can lead to confusion. Like the, that other error, um, there was a misconfiguration in the resource, right? And the status section wasn't being updated. So um, the, the user didn't so, know what was going wrong. What do you do if the user changed the spec while it's, for example, rebalancing? Um, Because that's the same situation, just at a different point in time. So would you cancel the ongoing rebalance and start from new proposal? So so this it's 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 updated sometimes, but not all the time, I guess. Like if you, you've updated it. Um, actually, Paula, Paula might be able to help me out here. Uh, <clears throat> so um, we you were talking about refresh right we 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 added this uh, uh kind of manual refresh after getting a proposal because we didn't want some uh, automatic uh, update so uh, asking for a new proposal starting a rebalance just because the user was changing something in the spec so uh so it's not clear to me uh 
when exactly do you think that the status should be updated? So for example, I create my Kafka rebalance resource, okay? And I make a mistake uh, in the spec. So I guess that um, uh, there will be, for example, an error in the status. Right. Or that should be this way, right? Then right. I, I change the spec. And then uh, now you expect that uh, it will start uh, a rebalance instead of me applying refresh. Exactly. Or it, it could, yeah. It, either that, either it, it does the refresh or it tells you in the stats section to do a refresh so that um, it'll be updated. Because right now the stats section will just stay so, as is. So this is a bit confusing because you say here the status will never be updated again until the Kafka rebalance resource is refreshed. But that is not true. This applies only when the rebalance is already finished and the state is ready or because otherwise, unless, or, or if there is possibly some error as Paolo suggested, but otherwise, if it's creating proposal or waiting for proposal, then it proceeds through the machine and the state is changing as it progress. Yeah. Uh, well, sorry. Yeah, I I guess when it's when it's complete, once the status is complete, right? Um, in that sense, like if you have a proposal in the status section, I think if you update the spec again, if a user doesn't know about the refresh, and you try, if a user tries to update the spec again after the proposals um, in the status section, it says we're ready to go, and you update the spec, that proposal stays there. So, okay, do you want something like a tip for the user? So instead the user exactly. knows from the documentation that uh, after the so, rebalance is ready, you have to refresh with the annotation, you want a tip. Because you change the spec, remember to refresh. This yeah, like even if it's a condition at the at the bottom, like with the, it's kind of like, oh, you, you user tried to change the spec and, you know, we're still using the old, this is, the, this proposal that you have at the bottom of the status section refers to the, I mean, I guess you can look at the timestamp of when the proposal was put there, but um, I don't know. I, w I was hoping for something a little more explicit, right? Because I, I could see a situation where a user, they update the spec and then they see a proposal already there and think that that proposal is related to the spec that they just put in there. That so, makes sense. The so second I, can, I can see Kyle, that that's confusing, but I think you need to think a bit more about what the right solution here is. Because basically what you are describing and the fix you are proposing, it sounds to me like if the resource is currently in the rebalancing state and I go and change the spec, you will just continue finish the rebalance with the old spec and move it to ready, but you will not anymore detect that there was a change to the spec, for example. So you actually end up in exactly the same scenario where you have been before, just with a slightly different set of steps where pretty much you maybe just change the spec a few seconds earlier when it's still rebalancing and not yet ready and that cause the problem. So, so I can see why this is confusing and unintuitive, but I wonder if the solution needs to have a bit more thinking to make sure it makes sense. Yeah. Oh, and that's, yeah, kind of the, uh, that's, yeah, I was hoping to yeah kind of get some feedback. Yeah. I didn't, I, to be honest, I didn't think of the the stages where it's you're in the middle of a rebalance, right? And then you it continues on, right? It, and then it could be so so another question. What happens if the user creates the Kafka rebalance resource, gets the proposal, then change the spec, and then approves the proposal? Will it actually uses the execute old the original, the original spec or the new the spec? The original. And you don't know, you don't know that it's using the original. A another thing is how do you actually detect that the spec changed? So 
so I wonder if the right solution should be somehow to take the spec which you get on the beginning, copy it into the status section so that it is more clear what is actually being rebalanced. And then if in the later steps, someone change the spec, then basically this change will be ignored, but it will be a bit more obvious because the actual used spec will be in the in the status. Yes, yeah, some something like that would would be nice. Yeah, if you have the oh proposals ready or proposals or rebalances done and this is what you this is what the user inputted, this is what the rebalance was based on. Not what maybe is technic maybe what's not currently in the spec. Um, just, just to be, just for, to be more explicit, that's all. Um, like I said, this was kind of brought on by the error, the pre, the other error that we triaged, um, like 10 minutes ago where, um, there was an error, right. Um, with the kind of the, with a timeout, right. And the, there was actually a problem with the resource was misconfigured, right? Um, so, but the user didn't know, right? Is the the resource hadn't been updated? I, actually, there's kind of that, that's pretty red herring. Just yeah, be having a message in the status would be nice. I I do need. Let me. How about this? Um, let me think more about this. Um, because this probably, I know this isn't like a huge issue, but I think it it require it kind of deserves more thought, maybe even like kind of a proposal yeah. because it can kind of get tricky. To be to, to be honest, I'm not sure proposal is needed, but I think what you describe here is a valid bug and something what can be confusing. And if you describe that and open it as a bug, then I think I would be fine to accept it as a bug. But you opened it as an enhancement describing a specific solution. And to be honest, it seems to me that it would deserve for the solution to try to cover the other states and try to make sure it's behaving a bit consistently. So, right. so I think we should not like, yeah, if you can take a bit more time to think about how to solve it as a more global solution covering all the states, then maybe we can get back to it next time. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay, so we'll transition it to a bug. Or, I'll come or, up with I'll, some I I'm fine with the enhancement, Kyle, but but like if it's an enhancement, then it should propose something what we want to do. And this does not seem to me like it fix, you describe a fairly big chunk of issues which we have there. And the solution you propose seems to me like it addresses only a small part. So. Right, yeah, this was, yeah, when I was, yeah. When I opened this, I was thinking, I was only thinking of just addressing this particular UX, but yeah. A solution will obviously have to address all the states. Otherwise, we'll be fixing one issue and then potentially causing others. But yeah, Paolo, I'll... Are the... Oh, sorry, Paulo. No, I was saying, Kyle, let's think uh, maybe offline and yeah, let's go through the state machine and double check all the states where this uh, can happen and... Uh... Yeah, and think more as Jacob is suggesting. So let's think if you like. It sounds good to me. Because on one side, I, I'm uh, even not sure that, uh, I don't know, replicating the spec in the status somehow. Uh, Might be a lot. Yeah, maybe a lot or is the best one, but. But I mean, even, right now I have no a better idea. So yeah, let's. Yeah, I mean, I was even if we just put like, I mean, we can talk offline, but even if we just say like, oh, the spec changed from the original, you have to refresh. Because a refresh would just solve. Well, in my opinion, would 
I guess it wouldn't solve the if you're in the, in the middle of a rebalance and you refresh that would, that would cause some problems. Yeah. But even if we like the 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 cop out, the easy the easiest thing, the simplest lazy thing to do um, would be just say, oh, this spec is not the original. The spec that's displayed is not the original. So be be aware, be wary. But I'm sure there's a cleaner, um, more intuitive, um, and effective solution. We just have to come up with it. Yeah, the thing is that uh, I don't know if I try to compare from, uh, let me say, uh, if I want to scale up a Kafka cluster, right? Uh, we have our Kafka custom resource with the three replicas. And then at some point we will change the replicas and we say, okay, five. While the operator is uh, running the, the, the scaling up, I'm going to scale up to seven. So the operator behavior will be that it will first finish the scaling up to five, then we'll detect the next change to scaling up seven and scale and starting the new scale up to seven, right? That would be what the operator does. In our case, the difference with the Kafka rebalance is I ask for a rebalance. The rebalance is going on. While it's going on, I, I change the, 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 the spec, I don't know, with the different goals, with some different things. And uh, the behavior will not be the same as for a Kafka scaling up, because after the change in the spec, what I have to do to apply Oops. and get the Oops. new proposal is refreshing. I'm not sure we want to get into all of details in the community call. So I put here together some of the points which we mentioned here of what we should think about. And maybe this can be done uh, offline and then we can triage it again next time. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll ping you offline, Paulo. Yep. We'll set some out. So that we keep track of some time here and so on. Okay, so that's the triage. Then the next point on agenda is the test container future. So we introduced the test container, the Strimzy test container some time ago and we replaced all of the cases where we were previously using the embedded Kafka cluster with the Strimzy test container. Now, the main issue is that the test container has not been updated for a very long time. So basically the last version it has is, uh, let me find when I raised it on, on Slack, basically the last supported version is Kafka 3.2.0. So we are missing a bunch of different patch releases for Kafka 3.2, but more importantly, we are also missing Kafka 3.3.0 and or 3.3, .3, let's say, and 3.4. Now this starts to be a big issue because actually this is used in the tests of the operators, but this is now using a Kafka version, which the operators actually don't support. So all the integration tests using it are basically using Kafka 3.2 in the test, but in reality, they are always running against Kafka 3.3 and 3.4. So this is now totally failing its purpose for streams. So I think it's the highest time to start thinking about what went wrong there and what should we do about it? Should we, is someone actually planning to get back to it and update it as soon as possible with the missing versions? Or should we simply archive the project, give up on it and then move back to the embedded Kafka cluster in all the different tests we have? 
or what is the plan we have for it? Well, I think uh, updating uh, Kafka versions to the newest will be like easy. Uh, let's say we should be before updating, we should uh, decide which uh, versions have to be uh, supported and how we retrieve it. Because I think when I was updating uh, the versions, the Kafka versions, I think that now we currently download Kafka versions from, I don't know, like uh, Apache a repo. And I think there was uh, three, only three versions of Kafka, which was not compatible with the operator one. And there was some issue, I think, around it. So the last Kafka versions are in the Apache CDN. The rest of them is in the Apache archive. The archive is super slow, but all the versions are available for download. Okay, so having this uh, Apache for the only all Kafka versions is okay because I think there was a problem with it. To be honest, it's a bit unfortunate that Tom is not working today and he's not here because I think yeah. he was a big proponent of it. So maybe it's something we should leave for next time. But the way it is right now, it's basically screwing us up in our own projects not even talking about it being usable by anyone else right because when we are testing against kafka versions which we ourselves don't support anymore then that's basically yeah, useless that's yeah. i can take a look on in these following days and update at least the versions and then we can just decide how we can like in the future goes with this stream test container if we should drop or something for support. But I can definitely I do uh, update of the Kafka versions. Yeah, even because I think, uh, and you can confirm that Maros, that coming back again to the embedded Kafka cluster will not be a trivial task, right? Yes. So there is a... Uh, like we, I think unless we can point out some compelling things it give us that we would have another way than dropping, it would save us the effort of supporting it. So I think like uh, there is two ways, like uh, and maybe Tom has some like a good opinion about that. I don't know if we should support or drop. So in the operators, as far as I know, the embedded Kafka cluster worked completely fine and was as easy to use as the test container. Yes, changing back to it would be effort and that would be the price we would have to pay for a bad decision done in the past. But I don't think there were any major issues with it. Sorry, Jakub, uh, because I don't remember, but uh, this embedded Kafka cluster is the one coming from the Debezium project, which was used in the bridge, for example, in the past? No, that's part of Kafka directly. Ah, okay. It's used there for like streams testing. I think it's part of the streams API test package or something like that. Okay, so Marsh will have a look at adding support for the new versions. Yeah. Now as a kind of quick fix. And we should keep the item for next time when Tom is back to discuss more the long term future. Yeah, for sure.
Okay, like this, does it make sense? Okay, I guess the silence means yes. So that's the end of the agenda. So does anyone has any other business, anything else they want to raise? Doesn't sound like it. So uh, I guess that's it for the call today. So thanks everyone for joining and uh, see you again in two weeks or on Slack and GitHub and so on in the meantime. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Thank Bye. 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 Bye